everybody. This is Diane. Welcome back for another episode of Biters. Whoa. When have we been on this together? Like, I know, right? Like November, maybe? <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. It's, it, I, you know what? I've it's even just pushed you it and me. October. Yeah. <laughs> got, got a little quiet time with you now. <laughs> Marnell is cheating on us with Logan. <laughs> Which I have not seen yet. Nor I'm, have I. I, I need to get to it. My boss is you know, out in California this week, so I'm probably going to get some movie time here. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, I I'm was that, a big Wolverine fan when the comic books were big. So so I was not. I was the guy who went against it. Really? I was just like, you know what? Everybody likes him. I'm not going to like him. That is not my favorite. My I was a Colossus kind of a guy. Yeah, I liked Colossus too, but definitely Wolverine. And I was always a villain guy, so. <laughs> of course you guy. were. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you, my zombified 30-something? I'm doing great, my uh, my Alaskan housewife. <laughs> um, Who feels a little zombified. I've got the plague this week, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm knocking on wood right now. Um, everybody in my house has been flu-free. Sick free for the most part, you know. I get the coffees here and there, and the 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 phlegm. But other than that, and my wife works in a hospital, so oh god, quadruple bullet dodged. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, my husband and I both work at the same prison. He works as a guard. I work in medical, and I told him I can't even blame him anymore for bringing shit home because it's it just the, goes around it, and right. around and around. And I'm I'm exposed to the same germs he is, so it's. Who's kissing is. who and yeah. you know, all sorts of stuff. Ew. <laughs> it's a, so it's the same way in boot camp. They always say this too because you get loaded up on a whole bunch of antibiotics, but everybody will get sick at some point. The whole Absolutely. platoon will be sick at some point because you've got, you know, 40, 50 people in the same barracks, in the same living quarters, using the same showers, the same sinks, the same toilets. You know, you're pissing four to a pisser sometimes, so everybody's going to get sick, and that's what happens. We're, uh, well, not the not the people who work in the prison, but the people who live in the prison, 125 to a pisser. Wouldn't that suck? Yeah, no kidding, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but not at the same time, though. Well, not necessarily. I mean, we're certainly hoping not, but kind of sucks to be the guy who's got to really pee, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so people are going to hear more noise than usual. I'm sure everybody's like, what? More noise than usual at your house? But we have a new puppy, and he has decided that the Shiba Inu, who is like 13 and deaf, is his play toy. So sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so bury me here. How did you rate it? So I gave it a shockingly three and a half missing cantaloupes out of five. So you liked it. That's a good rating for you. Uh, I like the last 15 minutes <laughs> or 20 minutes. Is that fair? Is that's, that a fair no, assumption? No, that's totally fair because I think that this episode had a really good twist and I think it, it really turned it around, actually. Yeah. Uh, so what was your rating then? So I give it a 4.275 out of 5 missing melons. Missing melons. So oh, we, well, we were the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, as well, we were kind of pinging each other during yeah, it, and yeah. you're like, ooh, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Snooze. Like, I just said, I just said it's either too predictable or too boring. And, you know, when we heard the gunshot, we're like, yep, we already know who it is, yeah. which sucks. Like, I don't like that. I don't. Like knowing because so I'm going to out myself right now because we'll get there. But that is my epic fail. But go ahead. <laughs> OK, so we'll just skip that. So we, everyone knows what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, if you didn't watch, please stop. Take a pause. Watch the episode and come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we have to say that now, right? But <laughs> well, my thought is if you're listening to the episode titled the episode you haven't seen. It's your own damn fault. Right. <laughs> right? I that's, mean, the, that's the title of this episode. It's your own damn fault. Yeah, Subtitle, it's your bury own me damn here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why I always hate it when people be like, wait, spoiler alert, and they right. play music, and it's just like, 
but you're listening to the episode about the episode you haven't watched yet. Or really, honestly, that this far into it, you know, when we're referencing something that's like three seasons old or that's four years old in the comic book and we're like, wait, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. So, uh, um, uh, you know, so bury me here, right? So it's obviously the grave. It's obviously. Oh, God, we got to do this like number yeah, stuff. You got to do shit. all that shit because. <gasps> oh, I, and I think we've already used up our three curse words for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, well, hold off on the title then. So just looking at numbers, I got to tell you, the numbers kind of bum me out. So I looked. It is at, its lowest rating since season three, right? I looked, I, I haven't, I didn't compare to any other seasons, but I looked at the numbers for Say Yes, which was the Rashon episode from last week. And it was 10.1 million same day view. Um, and it was 10.4 in live plus, I'm sorry, 13.6 in live plus three. Now the week before the one with uh, with Eugene, that was ten point four same day, so it was higher. The Rashon episode took a slide downward, and it didn't have very good live plus three numbers, which is really kind of depressing. Well, you know, I think what's happening is um, well, let's just get out of the way. Ten million viewers on Sunday night is still a lot of people. And and not to get political, because you and I are both on the other side of the fence, the opposite side of the fence, as people I'm sure are well aware, but the president's address to the joint session of Congress actually got higher same-day ratings than Walking Dead. As it should have. <laughs> as it should have. Well, you know, and, and quite frankly, even, you know, all all politics aside, yes, I mean, I would actually hope that people would be really aware so I, I can yeah. get behind that. Well, so I'll, <laughs> I'll say this. I'll say this. It's, it's, the, it's like the movie Howard Stern Private Parts. Um, there's a scene in there where they're like, what's his ratings like? And it's just astronomical. And they're like, yeah, and people who 18 to 40 who like Howard Stern, they tune in for an hour and a half. And then and he says, in age 18 to 40 who don't like Howard Stern, tune in for two hours a day. <laughs> And they're like, what? How the hell does this happen? And it's like, well, to hear what he has to say next, to hear what he's going to say next. Right. You know, so whether you're for it or against it, you're tuning in because you want to hear what's going to come out of somebody's mouth. That's right. So, but aside, yes, everybody should just stop and watch the presidential stuff, regardless of how it goes. Uh, anyways. So, yes, back to the ratings. Yes, we actually did. So, yeah, Walking yeah. 10 million is good. Took a seat. Took a seat to the, the presidential address, though, which was kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah I ten, mean, 10, 10 million, million is, is still huge, great, right? Especially it's eighth, huge. Your, your eighth season. This is eighth, right? Or seventh? Seventh, yeah. Seventh. So you're seventh and you're still doing 10 million yeah, an episode? It's still huge. It's huge. I wish we had 10 million <laughs> downloads per episode. <laughs> I could quit my job. Um, my my so, puny little Patreon contribution isn't helping you? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Um, so that aside, you know, it's still doing good, but, um, you know, there, there's always negative news out there. And right. so the comments are, Ratings it's are at down. its lowest of all time. Yeah. Well, we were kind of talking about it before we started recording is that, you know, I think we're just looking, we're reading the synopsis and say, oh, nothing happens tonight. Oh, nothing's happening tonight. And we're moving on. And I think you did see that very real group of people who are like not too violent jumping ship you know how i feel about that i think we feel the same way about that yeah. but it's but I cable think, and a zombie show right but i think there was that very real group of people who were like nope done but that's the thing then they must not have been around the beginning because the very first episode had a five-year-old girl get zombie punched and Rick in the killed. head with a cold yeah. python bullet right <laughs> So the first episode should have been your biggest warning that a man just killed a girl. And a beautiful horse was gutted at the end. I mean, it was yes. just a travesty from from the little girl walker to the horse, period. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dumbass. <laughs> um, sorry, we're just going to wait. What else you got to do? Oh, I'm not used well, to no. Saying. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I was going to try to keep you in line, man. So did you have yeah. any other thing for, for Bury Me Here? I mean, obviously it was the grave. I kind of felt like it had to do with Morgan and Carol, too, because they both have been buried 
in that little cemetery house in their own way, own ways. Now Morgan is going, but not going. Yeah. So I think this is really the, the, the coming out of your shell party. You know, this was the, um, this was the hype music. I'll say this episode was the hype episode. So, you know, you're just not in a groove, whether you're going to work out or whatever. And you know what? Something just kind of happens and you just kind of get your jam and you're like, yep, let's go right now. And so I think that's where bury me here was is because everybody was buried. They were, they were stuck in their little hole with their blinders on. I just, I'm, you know, nuts to bolts, A to B, A to B, A to B, A to B, without looking around to see what the world is going to. And that's where I think Richard was very smart in saying, it got to this point because we've let them get to this point. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're, we're just stuck. And I think that was just kind of that is, hey, here, here's what we got to do. And then there you see everybody, Ezekiel, Carol, you know, everybody's like, yep, it's go time. And while I think that there were some predictable things to get us there, which we'll talk about, I also think that there were some good things in this episode that kind of were like, whoa, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> so I, I liked it. Um, or or mm. maybe it was a vegetative narrative and it was the strawberry plant at the end of the episode <laughs> that said, just bury me here. Was it a strawberry plant? I wasn't paying I don't attention know. to what they were planting. It looked like a strawberry <laughs> to me, but who knows? But it was it was Ezekiel rebuilding the king's garden, right? Yep. And so I thought the King's Garden was a whole allegory for losing Benjamin, but having Benjamin's little brother and that whole thing. Um, just because, you know, that woman said to him, we can tear it all down, but you can rebuild it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, so the writer was Scott Gimple, which I actually really appreciated because of the references to Clear, which we'll, I'm sure we'll get into as well. And the director was a guy named Alric Riley, who I actually looked him up to see if he happened to be the director for Clearer. He was not. But he's got a bunch of other stuff to his credit, like um, an, a series called The Fixer, which I've heard of. I haven't watched. Lucifer, which looks really funny. Again, it's on my list. I haven't watched it. Um, Castle, Criminal Minds, NCIS. He's got a whole bunch of TV credits. And um, he's got two episodes of walking dead to his name he's got the cell which is the one where we saw daryl being broken and yes. he's and he's got twice as far which is the one where they're where denise died right mm -hmm. so so he's a familiar name all right i was kind of wondering if they would get the team back from clear but uh no didn't do that <clears throat> okay so I, I was going to hit you a little bit with featured cast, too, just because I love the guy who plays Jerry. So everybody's got a Jerry love affair going on right now. Got to tell you, I really enjoy him, too. He's getting down <laughs> on that freaking... <laughs> that cobbler, cobbler, man. He loved that I was going to say chowder, but it was, it was not chowder. <laughs> so the guy who plays Jerry is a Samoan guy named Cooper Andrews. Um, he was born in Long Island, which I thought was really funny. And he has been on Hawaii Five-0. He's been on a show called The Red Road that I'm going to blow it. I'm going to show you how uncool I am. Jason Momoa, is that how you say his name? Yes. Okay. He, so Jason Momoa is in that show too. Um, I think he, he must play one of Jason's brothers or something like that. Hmm. Anyway, and he and the guy who played Fat Joey have recurring roles on AMC's series Halt and Catch Fire, which also looks like another good series. I just... You know, again, don't have time. Yeah. So, but I thought the the thing that I wanted to say about Jerry was that no one else has said in anything that I've listened to or watched is that he's fulfilling the role of the King's Herald. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and nobody has said that. So I just wanted to point out that, you know, from the Middle Ages, and there are still countries that have King's Heralds, like Great Britain still has a Herald. Um <clears throat> The job of the Herald was to proclaim things or to carry important news ahead of the king. So so that's Jerry's job is to proclaim things, and he certainly does a good job. <laughs> this was his this was his first episode where he was visually visually sad. Right. Yes. Because he got whapped with a stick. And he looked pretty <laughs> dang cool standing there when they went back to the Saviors. With the axe. With his axe. Yes. Yeah. He really did. 
In fact, um, the guy who plays Jerry, Cooper Andrews, was saying that one of his favorite pieces of wardrobe is his gambazon, which is his padded, quilted, long shirt. So I thought that was hmm. kind of cool. That's the piece. That's actually a piece that goes under your armor. So. Well, all right, then. It, it's quilted under armor. <laughs> Anyway, so that's my stuff keeping you in line. Now let's go, man. Epic. All What's right. your epic? <clears throat> I think my epic really had to do with um, just Morgan just losing and finally just snapping back to reality. Do you feel like this is going to be the episode that finally brings back Morgan? Yeah, he's going to go full berserk now. He is going to go full berserk now, and it's because of what Benjamin said. When it's like, to hurt another opponent right. is to hurt yourself. Right. And he goes, well, I guess you're hurt either way. Right. And that made Morgan pause in the room. Like, hmm, I guess I never thought about that way. Is you're, You are literally screwed either way. Right. So you can either help people or not. And... It was reiterated by Richard saying the same thing. Is that his name, Richard? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of, you know what? You either kill or you might as well just kill yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really liked this. And I liked um, I liked all the flashbacks to Clear. I liked the fact that he called Benjamin Dwayne. Yeah. Total, like, so I think that's going to come back up yeah. in a conversation like, wait a minute. Who was Dwayne? And then he's going to kind of reveal a story about waiting. And I just thought I could have everything and keep everything happy and have my own kingdom. And everybody's story is the same. It never ends that way. Right. Nobody's story ever ends that way. I mean, in last week, I mean, as much as I didn't like Rick's whole, I could lose you and you could lose me pep talk to, to Michonne. It's true. I mean, they all have to live now as if they can't wait for the next thing. You know, it would have been hilarious when I was watching that. I'm just like, oh, my God, it would be freaking hilarious if Rick was like, no, really. Have you seen everybody I've been with? I'm never happy. <laughs> If he would have just went down like a checklist of all the times he gets screwed over. Right. Like, no, for real, Michonne. Like, <laughs> we've had sex last season. Your time's coming. That's just the way it goes. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we we totally knew Rick wasn't dying last episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the other thing about Morgan, did you see he was sharpening his bow staff into, yeah. to a point at the end? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was so cool. So he's going to go, I think he's going to go berserk mode. And, um, I think he's kind of, you know, he's, he's completed his arc now. So he is going right. to die. I think you're right. Whether, you know, and uh, here I've said this before, we're not getting all out war this season. There's three episodes left. Next, you guys still got to go to Oceanside or Ocean View or whatever the hell. I think it's Oceanside. So you still got to go there. You still got to have an episode of everyone rallying the troops when's it going to be, you know? So the war is next is next season. Um, so I, Morgan's dead next season. I, I think that's reasonable. I mean, I think in terms of people completing their arcs, you're right. I, I think that this is that Morgan's arc is done. He, he could die in the next episode and his arc would be done because really it was about bringing him back to, clear and it was about bringing him back to Dwayne and his wife. Mhm. Mm so, yep. All right, what's your epic? So my epic is Richard's long game. So, I have to be honest with you and say that I I was like, "What? What just happened?" <laughs> and it I have to give my credit my husband credit for for putting it together. He's like, "Richard totally planned this. Richard is the person who set it up. He is the person who hid the melon and he was sure that he was going to die." And sure enough, that is exactly how it went down. You know, I mean, well, not exactly how it went down in, who, in terms of who was getting killed, but that was exactly it. Richard had totally planned that he was going to be the person who would die as the Savior told him and that he was going to use himself to to create this forward movement in the kingdom, to get the kingdom involved in the fight. Mm -hmm. So I just thought Richard's long game was really epic 
And I really like that character. I'm, I'm glad in a way that they ended him in this episode because I felt like he was getting a little bit carried away with himself when he was like, and I will lead our troops into battle. I'm like, oh, okay, Richard, you're getting a little full of yourself there. So when it wrapped, yeah. when it wrapped around to Morgan killing him, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, I mean, because you, you let's you know let's rewind and think about when it was Daryl and Richard. You know, Daryl really kind of put that thought in his head when he's like, you know, instead of getting somebody else killed, why don't you why don't you contribute or why don't you make a sacrifice for the greater oh, good? Good point. You know, and then he was like, that. yeah, he was like, oh, I know how I have to do this. So, um, you know, it's all going to kind of come full circle. I'm I'm curious to see what Daryl's reaction will be when he learns kind of how it went down. If he kind of goes, whoops, that was kind of my fault, I guess. Um, I or if he even cares. That. Yeah, I don't think he'll carry that. Because I think, first of all, he's carrying so much guilt over Glenn. I don't think there's room on his back for anything else. And I think um, he's going to have to deal with the consequences of lying to Carol. You know what? Screw Carol. <laughs> She's going to be my epic fail, just so we're just so we're aware. Just so we're clear, okay. Yeah, just so we're clear. Um, but yeah, I think we're on the same page. I think both of our epics are legit. So will you... there will there be a suicide note that somebody might find in Richard's room? Of, hey, it was me who did all this. I knew I had to sacrifice myself to get this going. Blah 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 blah. Kind of a deal. I don't think so because he told Morgan. And so it's Morgan's to tell if Morgan decides well, he to. Would've, he, well, he would have wrote the suicide note before he told Morgan. Right. That's true. Now, I don't think there will be. I I don't know. Could be wrong, but I don't think there will be. I. But you just brought something else up to me for me, though. It's a good thing that Daryl saw his stash of Molotov cocktails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody else knows about it. No, just Daryl. So... <clears throat> Well, what was your fail? Oh, yeah. So we should probably do fail. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't need to go fail, to epic fail yet. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My fail is the fact that we're supposed to care about Benjamin. Now, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, stomping on baby kittens here. <laughs> I'm waiting. But I'm waiting for it. He is a third tier character. There's no difference between him or Tobin. Why do I care? Yeah, they haven't spent a lot of time developing him, but I will say that they made a point of of making mm-hmm. Ezekiel's relationship to him very clear. They right. made a point of it of it looking like and appearing that um, Ezekiel was very invested in him and that Morgan was invested in him. But I agree. But he's a third. I mean, tier, he's a third tier character, and. Who cares? They probably should have spent some more time developing him. I agree. You know, like, I mean, if you think about Noah, for example, Noah is a comparable person. Um, You know, you you felt Noah's impact because he did something. Well, and because Noah's death totally horrified all of us, whereas, and I think we're going to get into this, but Benjamin's death was kind of a foregone conclusion. Yeah, you know, it... Nobody care. I there there was no connection for me to really be saddened and have this triumphant return. You know, Ezekiel was because he fought with his dad. His dad died, and I mean, even if you go back to the beginning, where I was like, I bet this kid Benjamin is only learning this so he can kill Ezekiel because he knows or he blames Ezekiel for his dad's death, which was completely wrong. But <laughs> um, I didn't care. I don't care about Benjamin, so I didn't feel sympathetic for Ezekiel and saying. Well, now we got to go to war. Other than I knew that was going to, okay, gonna now be he's going to be pissed. Yeah, that was totally going to be the trigger. And I said that several weeks ago. So I totally, yeah, I'll talk more about that. Okay. <laughs> what is your fail? So my fail is actually also Richard's long game. So just like it was really epic and it was really cool that it was kind of set out and set things into motion. I also just thought, you know, it, it failed and it got Benjamin killed. And I thought that his reliance that the saviors would actually keep their word and be predictable in terms of who they would punish was an epic fail. But they were supposed to. What do so you mean? here's, so let's, okay, let's table that. That'll okay. be a rotten potpourri. Okay. 
Okay. I'm good with that. All right. All right. So what's your epic fail? You said it was my be epic fail. Carol is Carol. Okay. I don't care. I don't care. You walked out and the fact that everybody treats her like the queen, like, whoop, Carol's coming. Shit. Open the gates. Everybody. Whoa. Who cares? Who cares? You're so full of shit, Carol, because I'm leaving. I want to be left alone, but I'm going to be like six blocks outside the gate. I'm just down the road. I mean, that whole thing, I've talked about it with Marn. I just, I don't care. And the fact that now it's just like, oh my God, Carol is like Joan of Arc right now. And she <laughs> is like coming on and oh, we're going to war now. Yes. And then we're going to war and she's going to like lead this triumphant charge. And here we go. I just, no, you, you walked away. You're a grunt again. You don't get a, you you retired you don't get to come back out of retirement as a general again. You're back to being peon right now. I'm sorry. So that's I, just how it needs to work. I will tell peon. you that I totally think, and no, I don't totally think. I totally know they're playing on our feelings for Carol. Yeah, I mean, those 100%. Of, those of us who have watched her from the beginning and who have loved her arc, and you know, they're totally trading on our sentiment for Carol right now. I see that. I see that. And I, I will admit that I am not immune to that because I'm glad that Carol's coming back. I'm hoping that Carol is going to come back as a full citizen of this world. Um, I'm curious to know what she meant by repeating Morgan's advice to her. You know, you can go but not go. I mean, is Morgan well, going to somehow be restored by spending some time at that little cottage? I don't get that. Well, I think she was saying, don't go, but you can go. Yes, you can jump off the deep end. Yeah. But just don't go right now. Like, you can go, but don't go. Yeah, just, I... I think there's more like, just just wait here, fight with us, instead of, you know, like how Rosita was going to go off and right. do it by herself. And which it looks like she's like, going to do next week. Yeah, <laughs> her and Sasha, which... We one of them are gonna she's die. She's gonna get Sasha killed. I'm convinced she's gonna get Sasha killed because I'd rather she, see Rosita eat it. No, God, what's the matter with that? <laughs> Your heart is breaking because of those little booty shorts. I just know it. But I know. But <laughs> hey, you know what? Sasha's got to get going on Star Trek. So right. <laughs> so that's my epic fail. Is I just I just don't like how. Carol is going to be this, I, I'm terminate Joan of Arc and she's coming in and, and leading this giant charge and she's going to reunite everybody. And I hope Rick like shuts her down. Maybe we will see that she is the steel in Ezekiel's spine. Maybe that's what will happen. Or it would be fun if like all the other women were like, who cares, Carol? So what? You're back. I don't care. <laughs> Shut up. Or like Rosita, like was like, eat a dick. Shut up. Go away. <laughs> Rosita is gonna be like, I'm. If Rosita survives her harebrained scheme, she's gonna be like, I'm not even having it, Carol. Don't even talk to me. Who's got the scar on her face, huh? Not you. I do. <laughs> oh, so I think they're gonna get captured, and like Negan is going to like torture them and like mutilate them and give them back. Oh, oh, maybe she's the bag over the head. Could be. Oh. Could be. All right. What's your epic fail? Well, no, I like that as a bold prediction. So hang on to that. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> My epic fail is actually what you and I talked about, texted back and forth about during the episode, which is that Ben's death was totally predictable. And we should not be at a place where this is predictable. <laughs> I mean, I was actually yeah. really glad to see the episode take a serious turn and to see Morgan just lose it and strangle Richard as much as I really liked Richard because, you know, I was kind of bummed to see him die. But I was glad to see that totally unpredictable moment because I've been saying for weeks, Benjamin's going to get killed and that's going to be the thing that that triggers Ezekiel to participate in all out war. And here we are. So Benjamin's death, the, the predictability of his death was was my epic fail. Although I have to say it was somewhat redeemed by... Morgan's okay. I'm going to freak out and kill Richard. Yes. And I love the way um, that he stood at the door of Carol's little cottage and was like, okay, you want to know what really went down? This is what really went down. And by the way, I killed Richard. I strangled him with my bare hands. So 
when that came on, I started giggling because it reminded me of like, you're the ex boyfriend <laughs> and you know, your girlfriend is like breaking up with you because she caught you doing something or, or whatever, whatever, or you caught her doing something. And then it's like, you come back in her face for one last jab and you're like, and by the way, that night when you were at your mom's house and blah, 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 I went over and I banged Heather, your best friend, and I did X, Y, Z, and there, boom, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's what it, it was like. It was like the ex-boyfriend, like, coming over. It really like, was one of those One moments. final jab in her face and walking away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it I really, thought that truly was funny. Was. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, it's all right. Sniff, sniff. Yeah. So I think rotten we're at potpourri. some rotten potpourri, man. Okay. So before I forget, so we go back to Negan's outpost leader. Okay. You know, so that that's this guy. He leads an outpost. Gavin. You know, Gavin. Yep. Gavin, Gavin yep. leads the outpost. He's responsible for this outpost. They get the food for their outpost. They give their share to Negan's crew. Okay. So... He told the rat face peckerhead, you can kill him first. Don't worry. So he'd always kind of been very even keel. You know, hey, mm-hmm. this is the deal. We're not even going to come do the big scary stuff at your place. This is just, just what you're going to get if. Yep. These are the rules. Here's how it has to go. It can really go south for you. I don't have the energy. I don't. I don't need to do this. We can just do this quietly, peacefully. We're out of here. So it's always been the deal. And that's why Ezekiel's like, I don't want to go to war with them because they've they've held up their end of the deal. We've always met quietly, off property, at this place. My kingdom doesn't know. That's been the deal, and I don't want to I don't want to do anything to to break that. So it happened. The guy knows the rules. Gavin was thinking Richard, the rat face guy, was going to kill Richard. I feel so dumb that I didn't see that. But as you're talking, I can totally see that. And he turns around and he sees a shot kid and he's like, give Morgan back his stick. And Get, that we're, would, we're done. We're that out of here. would completely explain his response to the rat face dude when they found out that, in fact, Benjamin had died. Yep. That completely makes sense. You get your ass out of here. Yeah, you start walking Be- now. Yeah, so this kind of speaks to the bigger thing, and I think this is how the war is going to go down. So when this stuff happens, there will be detractors in Negan's compound who's just like, you know what? I'm not going to fight. This is it. This is over. And people like Gavin are in the place they're in because it's either better. It's better here than dead. And I'm an outpost leader, so I can at least simmer it down a little bit and kind of keep my own rules in my outpost that Negan doesn't know about. Like, you know what? We're not going to kill a kid. We're not going to do that kind of stuff because that's just I haven't gone to that place. So we're still going to kind of do this with honor rather than just going straight belligerent and just raping and pillaging everybody. So I think that stuff like that, like people like Gavin, we're spending a lot of time with Gavin. Do you um, think, oh, so, okay, bold prediction, sort of comic book related, everybody just suck it if you're not prepared for a spoiler. <laughs> Do you think that Gavin is going to end up living part of Dwight's arc? So I don't really know. I, I don't, I don't not, I'm not comic book fluent from here, but mm-hmm. what I was going to say was, you know, if there were people who were going to turn and, and kind of give up one of them, Gavin may be one of them. That's a really good thought because so let's, let's just set this example. Something has to spark Ezekiel. I mean, they, they have to declare war. So same time next week, next week's coming. Yeah. And they're going to show up and let's just say they kill everybody, but Gavin, Gavin's standing there and he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The kid died. That was never the intent. Richard was supposed to die. This is what was supposed to happen. And if you guys, you, you're not going to win. Negan, Hey, we've got all this stuff. Here's what's going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. Here's how you get in. 
Here's how you make it happen. So I could totally see someone like Gavin, who still has a heart, giving up the information to help them infiltrate and stuff like that. I think that's a very possible role for that character. I agree. I um Because why else? Why else make the big deal about Benjamin? Yeah. And he showed it tonight. I mean, he really he's looked tired and he's looked kind of fed up with everything that he's doing all along, but then tonight turning on one of his own instead whereas as uh who's the other guy? If, the other Yeah. Yeah, the other like the other lieutenant. The, si- yeah, the porn Simon star. Simon Og is dude. his his uh is Simon his name in the? I don't know. Stephen, He's just got that cheesy I think mustache. Stephen Ogg is his name, and I think Simon is his name in the series. Stephen Ogg is the the actor's name. Um, yeah, I mean, I think whereas his character would have been like, okay, fine, let's just kill Richard and the kid. Mm-hmm. You know, where yeah, okay, interesting, very interesting. So yeah, so that's kind of how I, I see it kind of going down in a way. I think we could see that. And, you know, that is definitely part of Dwight's arc in the comic book. So yeah, we'll I, see think, if it's... I think Dwight's setting that up. I think he's really setting that up in the long term. Or maybe yeah. somebody like Gavin, maybe somebody like Gavin just says, you know what? If this is what you're going to do, take the guns. Take all these guns. And you know oh, what? I'll here's get you some even, more. I'll, I'll even get you some more. Yeah. If That's this is what possible. you're going to do, I want to help you. That's very, I want to very help possible. You. Because just like you live under his rule, I have to live under his rule, and I have to kill that kid. Because if I don't kill that kid, he's killing me. Yeah. And this is what I have to do. And I've got to this point, and I've survived by doing bad stuff that I can't. Because, you know, like he does. He looks just sick. He, he does. looks sick with decision. Yeah. He looks sick, just sick. So maybe that's the point is, you know what? If this is, if this is really what you're going to do, because maybe he'll go – Maybe he'll go on like a silent mission to meet with Ezekiel and just kind of say, hey, you know what? I am really sorry about the kid. You know what? Maybe there'll be something like that some way, shape or form. Who knows? I think it would be pretty cool if we saw it come full on in a drop with the saviors, though. That'd be cool. Because even the trash people said, "Eh, you need more guns. This is not enough guns. You need more guns. <sighs> Don't even get me started. Actually, that is that is too full of a sentence. That is not even remotely what the yeah. trashy people said. <laughs> more gun. Bang, bang. Pew, pew. More gun. Right? Pew, pew. Or else. And the cat back. <laughs> and, and cat back. Name was Winston. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really do think the trashy people are just the worst. I'm still obsessing about that. That was just, uh, so the bold prediction we talked about this offline is, so here's my bold prediction for the trash people. I like this. I like this. So, I, I endorse this fully. Go for it. Yeah. So it's the big, the big war next season and they all are on their positions surrounding Negan's compound. Cause I don't think they're all going to come from one way. That would be stupid. So I think, you know, the four or five groups that will be attacking will all be coming. Kind of flooding from, from their own directions. Yep. They're yeah. all going to be coming from their own directions. So that'll be pretty cool. So then it's just going to be an absolute swarm. because so there's going to be a distraction. There's going to be people coming from all sides. It's going to be total chaos in Negan's compound. But that's going to fall apart because the trash people aren't going to fight. They're going to stand there and watch because... We don't do. We just earn. What do? What is it? We don't hassle or something like that. We don't bother. We don't bother. That's what it is. Yeah. We take. We don't bother. So they will sit there and watch everybody fight, and then they're going to show up to claim their stuff. And so and for Rick's the going to be like, yeah, nah. So for the listeners, when Brian said this to me, I said, okay, I'm fine with that as long as our group doesn't put up with that. I hope you don't think our group will put up with that. And he said, no. No, they're going to. So my 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 call would be they're you know what, they might turn on their own and they're going to take all their guns back and then they're just going to leave them amongst all of the dead people in Negan's compound and just walk away from them. I, think- I don't think they're just going to gun them all down. Because that that's go, too governor-esque. Right. But I think they're just going to leave them. They're and, just going to leave them to die. And it would go a really long way toward undoing the 
colossal mistake of the series, which I believe, I sincerely believe, was the Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, terrible. And the green screen. I have to give Mr. Blog, who guested on um, Walking Dead cast last week and the week before, some credit. He was like, you know, I think that they're just trying to get us to say, what horrible green screen moment can they do with each episode this this season? <laughs> the CGI I, is just... Oh my god! I rancid. See, I can't get over the green screen with the trash heaps. That was the worst. The Terrible. worst. Terrible. Period. So stupid. I can totally do Shiva. The CGI of Shiva is actually pretty good, but the um, the green screen with the trash heap, awful, 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 awful. Like, how could you not go to like an actual trash yard <laughs> right? and just shoot it? And you know. I really do like my willing suspension of disbelief. So when I have moments like that where I'm like, wow, that CGI is really bad. You know, it's bad. If I'm noticing it's bad, you know, it's bad. (laughs) Terrible. Okay. So what else you got? So I have to tell you, you know, Chris Hardwick said it on the little bit of the talking dead that I watched tonight. And I have to agree. Um, That woman looking at Shiva and saying, okay, I think I just pissed myself. (laughs) (laughs) Got to be the best line of the series ever. Even better than like Mother Dick and Suck My Nuts. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> so I like that. I really like that little moment with her and Shiva. And she was an, an interesting just little aside into the story. Yeah. And it's, it, I mean, it, it also served as, as a catalyst, a turning point, because Ezekiel knows they're going to war next week at the drop. We have no produce to give them. Right. And again, it's just that whole allegory of, you know, we can tear it all down, but we can build it back up. And really, Carol, if you're going to help plant and you're really going to do this, are you going to go to the same damn spot everybody else is working (laughs) in? You see all these open gardens here, but you want to plant right here, right next to me. Ezekiel is there. God, get the (laughs) hell out of the way. Okay, so speaking of Carol... The whole thing where she's coming through, you know, leaving her little cottage and coming to the kingdom. I thought, man, we don't even bother killing walkers anymore. You know, when she just knocked that first walker kind of down and out of her way. I was a little bit bummed, you know, because I think that in in some ways we've taken the the fight the dead, fear the living too far. I want the walkers to be scary again. Yeah. And well, so I was like, really, you just hit him in the arm. But I guess to set it up for later in the episode, she had to do that. Right, because we had to see the walker brained at some point and say, what? Wait, when did that happen? Yeah, wait a minute. Someone's here. Yeah. Kind of a deal. There's an awful lot of shopping carts to get (laughs) from somewhere. Okay, the shopping carts are forming an arrow. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Anyways. (laughs) Well, it points to Richard for his long game. Again, it was quite yeah. the setup. And and my husband pointed out that that water bottle that was, or that canteen that was labeled Katie must have belonged to his daughter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was his daughter. So, um, what else? There really wasn't much. I'm trying to think of like the the beginning 45 minutes. Oh, I've got to say, I really like the music in the cold open. So the cold open was really short. And I was like, okay, what's the point of the, the cantaloupe in one cantaloupe in a box? That's kind of weird. And I thought maybe the kingdom was actually setting it up to have a fight with the saviors. Yes, so did I. Because it took me forever to realize. I was just like... Oh, that's, that's what the they one did. They have to take back. Oh, right? I get it now. Right, but I have to say, points to Baron Mercury for the music because I thought that that was really nice. It was very beautiful and it was beautifully done, and it kind of just brings you back into the kingdom, brings the kingdom back into the story. So I really like the way that he's playing with with kind of that medieval sound when whenever the kingdom is is featured. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying that. Um, I know what one of my rottens were. Who in the hell does Carol think she is to flip through matches like this? <laughs> and candles. Remember when she had all those candles lit? Come on, man. I mean, literally, she wakes up from a nightmare to light a lantern, then uses another match to light a cigarette. Wait a second. She's the I'm queen. Sorry. She's like, almost the queen. 
<laughs> Matches should only be used to start a campfire, period. How did we not learn this in the last three years? So, what? I'm sorry, like, just what? I, I don't get it. Maybe part of that is also Carol living outside of reality. I don't know. It just for convenience. I get it. It's stupid, but there's so much moonlight when there's no street lights. Right. It would light up the entire house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anyways. I don't know. And was she waking up crying? I, I was like, yeah, it was just okay. some kind of nightmare she had thinking about all the bad things she's done. I guess I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think she was thinking about what actually went down at Alexandria, and that's what made her seek out Morgan. I think hmm, she, I mean, been, yeah. she obviously knew that Daryl was lying to her. So I think she was probably crying about that. But, oh, let's see. Um, I would like to see the guy who stole the bow staff and who was responsible for Ben's death to die gruesomely. I did text that to you and I, I stand by that. <laughs> yeah, maybe, uh. Oh, um, what's the big dude? Cherry Cobbler guy is going to kill him? Jerry. With the that would axe? be good. I would like to see Jerry take him apart with the axe. That'd or maybe he's Shiva's first That would be good for Jerry and that snack. would be good for us. Or, Ooh, yeah, Shiva. What if, what if, what if they load up the truck to go make a delivery and they go and they open the gates and Shiva comes jumping out at <laughs> and them and they're the like, guy. shit, Tiger. <laughs> and then they kind of chop everybody else up. Although I'm not sure Ezekiel would risk Shiva like that. Because now well, they have all the guns and none of our guys from the kingdom have guns. Yeah, but if they're standing there like, yep, your produce is here, go yeah. count it. And they go over there and everyone's kind of got their guard down because they know they have no guns. So I don't need to have my guns drawn anymore because they don't have guns. And then, you know, because they still got arrows and stuff. It would be awesome. I agree. I would love to see Shiva eat that guy. But... I'm not convinced that we're going to see it. Old Jerry got a boo-boo. <laughs> okay, so the Gimple tie-in to the episode Clear. So did he write or did he direct Clear? Or did he write and direct Clear? I can't remember. I thought, I thought it was both. I'm going to look it up while we're talking. But I was glad to see that. And I kind of felt like, you know, we were talking about Morgan's arc. And um, I just was really glad to see this kind of be the flip side of Clear. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's neat to see kind of the flashbacks and where he's kind of losing it and where mm -hmm. he almost kind of, like, almost kind of kills himself. You knew he wasn't going to do it, but he's, like, he's going through, like, all these rage things. And to me, that was just, like, him just, he he snapped and he lost it. You know, that was his, okay, like, I'm, I'm fully broken now mm -hmm. and he's got his bloodlust back. And it's, it's go time. I understand what I got to do now. I got to kill everybody. But again, though, I'm going to go kill every single one of them, one at a time, one by one. Here I go. It's like, no, you're not. Just stop it. Like, <laughs> why do you think like this? Why does everybody think they're a badass three years into this thing that they can take on a whole army? You know, and that's not how it works. And you know that. You know that. But I think they just get so blinded by rage that it doesn't matter. And I think that is... I, We've got to be due for a kill off, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, even though we lost Abraham and Glenn, we've still got to kill off a lot of second layer characters and third just in the whole all out war. I mean, there's got to be a huge kill off. So we actually may not see a big kill off at the end of this season. And it may no, be not at all. Yeah. Nope. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Okay, so Clear is. was written by Gimple. This was written by Gimple. And then it was Clear was actually directed by a woman named Trisha Brock. Ah. Uh, so. Um, Excuse me. This, this, this season will end with everybody, like, out circling Negan's compound. And then they're going to get alerted to it. I just hope that it doesn't end with a big cliffhanger like, oh, oh it's going you know, to. so-and-so gets killed and blah, blah, blah. No, I just, fine. End with everybody encircling Negan's compound. That's fine. But leave it there. I'm okay with Which that. Which I think is garbage. Which I think <laughs> is garbage. I'm not. I'm not. And it's a total letdown for the season. So what do you think would be better? What would you like to see? They need to do the war. 
Um, they but you know they're not before. going to. No, and I said at the beginning of the season, and I will still maintain it, that if Negan is not captured by the end of the season, I'm done. And it's and it's almost true. And then because, it's just going to be the real housewives, man. Because that's <laughs> literally, literally, uh, we talked about this before. What if it's if it's not for the first episode of this season, nothing has happened. Nothing. I think there's been a lot of buildup, but I think, you know, you're right in terms of action, in terms of things that have been big things. And it no, shows. really a lot hasn't happened. You know, and, you know, rise up and all the stuff, the promos during February and the Super Bowl and here we go, rise up. And it's all this cool stuff. And you're like, yes, man, we're going to hit this back half of the season and take it home. What? Yeah. What? We but get a bunch of dipshits playing in a friggin' junkyard and you're out of your mind. <laughs> right. Yeah. And remember, it's rise up. It's not all out war. It's not all out war. Yeah. It's rise up. Yeah. And that's what they're doing is they're all rising up. Eight episodes worth of rising up. Me. No. You could have done all this rise up junk and four, maybe five. Then had your last three for the all out war. Capture Negan at the end. You start and season have that be with, the cliffhanger, and that be the cliffhanger. Negan in the cell is the cliffhanger. Negan Negan goes in a pair of handcuffs yeah. as Rick is walking him out, and that's the cliffhanger. You're like, oh my god, he didn't kill Negan. What? How did you not kill Negan? That being the cliffhanger, rather than everybody circling out there, and they draw the war out for eight more episodes. Till Christmas. Oh my God. I hope they don't make it the whole first half of the season. I really hope they don't. I think it's just, see, I, I still love the show uh, and I think I still love the show more than you do. Not, yeah. not to pick on you at all. I'm not trying to pick on you, but I don't want to see them do that. I want to see them reclaim the glory days, man. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're, they're on they're They've, they've eclipsed the top of the mountain. I, I would rather um, they go out with a bang than a whimper, you know? <laughs> I actually saw but they got to act fast. Well, I so I was, I was talking to my wife about this. She doesn't, she's seen maybe three minutes of an episode of the walking dead. The show is on the verge of becoming lost. Lost as in lost, right. but lost as in the TV show lost. Right. I know what you're talking about. Lost was awesome. One through five. And then they got greedy and they started drawing everything out and they started loading up on commercials Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. By the way, there are so many freaking commercials. I totally agree with that. That's an epic fail right there in and of itself. So many commercials. Yeah, the whole extra seven minutes is one more commercial. You break. have like a 35-minute episode when you fast forward through all the commercials. <laughs> yes. So that's what sucks. And it makes me sad because I've invested a lot of time and effort and family time into this. And I... You're screwing me over here. Gimble. And it's, it's a great show. I mean, it's still one of the best shows to make it to TV. I, I really believe that. But I would yeah. like to see them and go it's out just, closer to the top of their game. You know, it when I so I watched a couple of minutes of talking and he even said, you know, we really wanted to develop this character out a lot so you could understand why he was doing. It's a second tier character. Richard, Richard, maybe even a third tier character. The sad thing is, I, I could have seen Richard become a first. He could have been developed into a first tier character. You know, so it just why, why, why did you seriously spend this much time and effort into this guy? So what? So what if he had a daughter and it was killed before his eyes? So is every single other adult here without a kid. Let's be honest. I kind of felt like that was actually the the actually the root of his story of telling Richard's personal story is that every freaking person sitting in that group had a similar story. Yeah. I mean, it's played out for Rick. It's played out for Carol. It's played out for Morgan. Every single one of, of the survivors that we care about and people that we don't particularly like, I'm sure have lost mm -hmm. their family members the way that Richard describes having lost his family. Yep. Everybody has. So, the the point that we just we literally just wasted an episode on somebody who doesn't matter anymore. That's what pisses me off. And that's why I think the whole Carol coming back 
is just a sucker punch because it made me write it right at 3.5 instead of a two because she finally got the truth thrown in her face and now she feels super guilty about it. See, I liked me, her pain and suffering. This was a Morgan episode. For me, I thought it was going to be Carol centric. I didn't really feel like it was. It definitely was. Richard was an important catalyst in this episode, but I really felt like this was a Morgan episode. And that's what I meant when I said I felt like it was the the flip side of clear. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I, 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 Which again, I get it's it probably you, the reason that you rated it a 3.5 as opposed to a 2. <laughs> yes, because it was that last 20 yeah. minutes yeah. that didn't have Richard in it. And I liked Richard, but I don't think he was important as what Gimple made him become. And I don't think it was necessary, just like I don't think a lot of this stuff is necessary. A lot of it. 70% of this season was unnecessary so how filler could, episodes. How could they have, I mean, I, it's, it's all speculation now, but how could they have winnowed it down and made the walking dead that we still love? Oh my gosh. I mean, there's think about though, the one whole episode that I was getting the boat. Yeah. It didn't need to be a whole episode, 15 minutes of getting the boat because then the whole Spencer thing drug out forever. Spencer was doing this whole thing. I mean, they spent so much time. The Negan and Carl thing was great. Where is it now? It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Like Carl was starting to like Negan and now it's all gone. So even if they come back to that, you've already forgotten about it because that's so far in the past in your mind. You've forgotten that Negan was hanging out with Carl and he felt bad because he was picking on him about his eye, you know? And he was like, damn kid, you know, God, doesn't your dad do this? Doesn't he let you do this stuff? You know? And those were real things that happened so long ago. We've all forgotten about it because we've been so bogged down by trash people or just nonsensical, like the whole carnival thing. Granted, I liked last week's episode, but it didn't have to be the whole 67 minute episode. It really didn't have to be. They had these little takers, you know, do you really think Rick is going to die falling down? No, you knew it was the deer. Right. And, you know, you knew all this stuff was happening, but we didn't really have to spend all of that time doing that. And what's really going to be pissing a lot of people off is if the trash people really don't fight and then they just take their stuff back and they leave the trash people in Negan's compound just to be there. Why did we waste all this time developing the trash heap? What the hell did we spend two right. episodes doing? Why? Why did we spend two episodes doing this? I don't know. So that's, that's <sighs> what I get. That's what I get when we get this stuff. Where it's just this dead time of crying and sobbing. You know, how much time did we spend on um, Father Gabriel talking to Rosita about going and doing it? And just there's, there's so many of them 15, 20 minute chunks of stuff that never amounted to anything. And that's just kind of where it sat. And when you add up a bunch of those 15, 20 minutes, we get to where here. And even going back to the second episode of this half, I was on with Marnell. I said, look, here's, here's how the next six episodes are going to go. And you've been essentially right. Spot on. Yeah. Because now we got to go to Oceanside. So that's coming. And... We've then we've got two episodes left. Um, well, it looks like where the kingdom is happening next week, and that's where I think old Dippy Doo is going to get himself killed because <laughs> he's going to. Which Dippy Doo? <laughs> the leader, Gregory. Oh, okay, okay. So Gregory Hilltop. is, yeah, Hilltop. What yeah. did I say? Use the kingdom. kingdom? Oh no! Sorry, that's Greg why I wasn't tracking yeah. with you, man. <laughs> no, you know, uh, Gregory at Hilltop, they're going to go out there and all the saviors are going to come because they're going to find out Gregory snuck away in the middle of the night or he told somebody that, hey, these two people 
from Alexandria are here. Let's just have a giant conflagration and burn up Gregory and burn up the trash heap and start over. <laughs> what I think is going to happen <laughs> is they all come. You know, we've seen it. All of Negan's people come with all their guns. And you see Sasha and them packing their bags and hopping the fence. Then they're going to go to that trailer and be like, nobody's even here. And then they're going to be like, where is he? And Jesus is going to be like, he's a liar. He's gone crazy. He's lost his mind. And then that's when Gregory's out. He might get gutted there. He might get killed. Or he's going to get somebody else killed because he tried to sell him out. So then when Negan's people leave, the townsfolk are just going to do it anyways because they're all on Maggie's side anyways. So I think that's what's going to happen there. So now you got one episode left. No, we've got two. We've got three episodes total. We've got okay, so yeah. we've got next so week. Then, so then that's next week. So then you go to Oceanside. You got to have that. That's a whole episode. There's no way they're going to do 20 minutes on that. Right. So that's a whole episode. And then, so then you've got then we've got, got, the got your last to episode yeah. where everybody is coming together and all the leaders are going to meet. You know, ooh, and that'll even piss me off more. Is if not <laughs> just the towns that come together, it's just the leaders that come together. It's just the leaders and their entourage come together, <clears throat> and that's it. You don't even get the masses of people. It's just the leaders coming together because you've still got to deliver more guns to the trash people. Still, you've got to do a lot of stuff. And and we're hoping that this leads to episode one of season eight being all at war, but we don't really know that. No. And that's the thing. It may not, it may not, it may just be the leaders coming together and then you don't even get the war started until season or episode three of next season. I just, I'm flabbergasted that they have slow played this season from as much backlash as they got out of slow playing Glenn when the dumpster, you know, hiding underneath the dumpster, slow playing that, slow playing the the summer break, you know, yeah, all of that stuff. Like after all this, they're still doing it. Well, let's take it up a notch, man. Before we wrap it up, only yeah, because I'm, this is really I've depressing. Done everybody off. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I would really like to see The Walking Dead regain some cred and go out on the top. So let's hope for that. I don't want to see it end. I mean, you never want to see a good thing end, but you want to see it end as a good thing. You know what I mean? I'm hoping we get to see more of uh, what you call it in fear, fear the walking dead. What's her face? Ophelia uh, or. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we don't know what for sure when that's coming back. I do did want to tell pe people that Preacher looks like it's coming back on June 19th. It sounds like they're bringing into the Badlands back next weekend. Eh, okay. I'm not so excited about that, but whatever. Yeah, there's no Talking <laughs> Dead next week. Well, there it's will after. be, but it's going to be after. Yeah, it'll be Into after. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can binge watch Preacher at AMC.com if you're interested in that. And I, I just really would like to say, as Marnell and I said last week, I think it's a great series. Even if you don't want to listen to a podcast around it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so... I, I like Preacher because... So this I'll say this about Preacher. The first season of Preacher never existed in the comics. The comics of Preacher start at the very end of... Of the last episode. Pretty much. Yeah. So that's kind of exciting. I mean, you can go in there and really kind of learn about all this stuff. And it's kind of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it really had one of the best premieres ever. I'm sorry. Still, Donnie getting his arm broken on screen. One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> Oh, so I did want to bring that up. Um, I went online tonight before this episode and I said, okay, who dies? Anybody? And Phil Parrish, who is a podcaster for Southgate, came on and said, Carol. And I was like, you know, I was kind of thinking that too. But no, we didn't get that. Um, Thomas O'Mara said, let's see, five out of five clear flashbacks. Amazing episode. At a loss for words on how to describe. Oh, and I saw Shane this morning and he's got a picture with John Barenthal. So... Thomas O'Mara, what do you do that you are independently wealthy and you can go to all these cons? You're driving us crazy. <laughs> yeah. Do you need security or a boyfriend? Because I'm probably for rent. I'll be security. He'll be your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. However that needs to happen, make it so. 
Oh, let's see. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I think I think actually being kind of bummed out by the main series, maybe we'll see more life in in fear. I don't know. I'm willing to take it. I mean, it's already down. shot. It's already so. shot and done. And they're going to be starting filming here. Episode, you know, where what do we do? May. May is when they start filming. For yeah, season for eight. season eight, yeah. So I think season eight, um, if if it continues to go the way it is, they will have to make season eight literally just insane to recover. I hope they do. I'd be fine with that. Starting with the demise of Madame Trash Heap and all of her garbage pail kids. I hope they shave her head. Can you scalp her? <laughs> is that okay? I'd be fine with that. They did it now that now that International Women's Day is over. Can we scalp her? <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> Which is funny because so side note, I have an International Guys Day next Saturday. We call it our fourth annual International. It wasn't intentionally renamed that. We only called it International because my friend's Asian. He's from Laos, so now we call it International because we have more outside people. He's your token non-white guy. Yes, yeah. And he only has one eye, so it's even better. Um, so we go to our cigar store here, and it's BYOB, so we bring a bunch of booze and watch the first round of the basketball games and throw a lot of money around and smoke cigars. And I'll think of you while I'm hanging fun. out with prisoners. Yes, it'll be great. <laughs> so your International Men's Day. Yeah, International Guys Day is, is next weekend, which I go, never man. really, I never really ever thought about that. And then I just, I'm like, you know what? I bet I piss a lot of people off by saying that. Because <laughs> I would always be like, yep, internet, you know, I'd be like, International Guys Day is on this day and this time. So bring your stuff and be here because we all bring a different bottle of booze. And then we all kind of sit in the middle of the table and you can kind of just help yourself to whatever you want because everybody brings a bottle. So everybody shares, you know, so it's nice. Um, I just, I was just like, man, I bet I piss a lot of people off. Well, that this don't lefty know. can find is something in you to love. I'm sure that, yeah, I'm sure you you're know, it's okay. Just like, <laughs> it's just like, it had no, <laughs> no intentions. And the only reason we called it international guys day, cause it used to be, so here's the thing. Guys day started out because I was having a child. Or I just had Benny. Oh, how funny. And we kind of went to kind of just do like a guy's day, sit, drink, smoke cigars, watch basketball, bet on some games. So then the next year, a friend of mine, he had kids. So it was his you know, his guy's day. And then the year after that, it was another friend's guy. So everybody <laughs> who comes winds up having kids. So this year, this other guy, I think his name's Mike, he's pregnant again. Oh, my God. His wife. So it's like, if you come to this, there is like, it's like a game of Russian roulette. Okay. Like, I'm going to be the token chick at International <laughs> Guys Day and I'm going to show up with condoms. <laughs> yes. That's probably what needs to happen. So it's like Russian roulette. So like everybody's sitting at these two tables. One of us is coming back next year with a kid. Nobody, nobody knows who it is yet. <laughs> I don't think I want to hang out with you, Eigenberry. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. It's like a fertile ground. <laughs> I have my own freaking voodoo priestess spells that cast some people. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. All right, will you enjoy International Guys Day with this your token one-eyed guy? Yeah, token <laughs> one-eyed Asian guy from Laos. And in the meantime, let's remember... Take it. One, one dead, dead day, day at, at a time. time. Not bad. Yeah, we went way long on that one. We I'm going to go I'm in trouble. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 45 minutes? Shit. Sorry. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. See ya. Bye. <laughs>